Mm. Oh my goodness. This is the one with uh, um, berry and vanilla filling. In all fairness, they're more I was going to say more better. They're just tastier. The fresher they are. Oh my goodness. So, look what I found from Rite Aid. Rite Aid. of full cover nails. Are these the short ones. Let me see. Active square. So that's not too short. I guess that's a medium. And then this is the overlap. They call them cover nails or full cover cover nails, and then you can paint them. So here's a, a pretty, like a purple sparkle nail color. And what is this one? Somehow. And I've also been eyeballing the uh, Globe. I have another Globe magazine. Uh, not sure what I enjoy more, the actual magazine or the personal ads. of these which is nice and then it looks like
think they said you're even supposed to file the uh, top of the nail. Uh, they uh, mentioned it. painting onto a smooth slick nail might not work very well. Oh my goodness. I've had them on. It just doesn't seem like an easy uh, art to master functioning through the day with a super curved long fingernail. So much to look forward to on this channel, right? So I know what This is like the nice how everything just fell into place. I changed my color on my backdrop and uh, enjoy it more so. I know everybody is doing the browns and the oranges and fall colors and I, I have the hardest time adjusting to the fall colors and everybody calls them like the warm <laughs> fall colors. What's up with that? For those of you who know uh, the color, the color thing. I know how different colors uh, work better on some people than other people, but what is 
the reverse. What is it when you're seeing a color that gives you a reaction? You know, I had the hardest time back in the day. How many years ago now did Target come to town? Like, uh, Target wasn't always here. Like, Walmart or Kmart, right? Um, it, it seemed like I, uh, here in Southern California, Walmart just showed up one day. Same with Best Buys. But, um, I had a little bit of a problem with Best Buy because they had a yellow in their logo. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, but I just know for me, the Best Buy logo, and go heading to the Best Buy store, my husband loves, loves that store, by the way, with all the technology and electronics. But for me, um, I wasn't as excited. Same with Target. Do you know the red um, Target logo and big sign and you go inside and it's red? Could not understand that for the life of me. And people are just having the best time. <laughs> and, having the best time, acting as if it's not even, even bothering them. But uh, any of you ever have that? Maybe that's why I loved, um, if I recall, the thrifty drugstore used to be blue and white. Local, and come to find out, love that store. Now, on right, Abe. They have blue and white, but they added a little green. I love um, Rite Aid over CVS. Maybe that's why, I don't know. Uh, is a uh, funny color. I think that's it. Yellow on the Best Buy. Logo in the red Target. Now it doesn't seem to bother me as much, but now that I'm talking about Target, I tried to go online. I mentioned this a couple minutes ago. I used to have a huge Target credit limit, $1,200 or $2,000, something weird. And then, because I hadn't used it, they sent me a thing saying because I hadn't used it. But now, my credit limit is $500. And that I needed to use it, so that was months ago. So a month or, maybe a month ago, I got a thing saying if I don't use it within 30 or 60 days, they're closing my account. So I bought some arts and crafts stuff. I spent not quite a hundred bucks. Went online to try to pay it, and I can't pay it online. And. Uh, in fact, I should uh, just make a little note here. Maybe to call them, or maybe you have to pay on on phone call in call Target. Um. Okay. Hold on. I got confused here. I have to call Target. I have to call the tax lady. I have, I have all these little uh, notes, so uh, this should be a fun afternoon, kind of thinking of my videos to get ready for us later tonight or tomorrow. Um, we're going to 
have a lot of fun. Now I want to get a couple more different colors. How can you go wrong with a dollar nine nail color? Uh, I notice they don't call it nail polish anymore. They call it nail color. Wet and Wild, a dollar nine from Rite Aid, and lipsticks for a dollar nine. Wet and Wild from Rite Aid, and you can have a, a shopper. Um, forget Instacart. You have to pay a minimum thirty-five dollars Instacart for no um, delivery fee. Um, if you go on DoorDash. For Rite Aid, it's a twenty dollar minimum charge for no delivery fee. So that's how I ended up with two of the, the full cover color cover nails. I think these were seven or eight bucks each. I got two of those, and uh, I got the this and this, and um, I had a couple other items that came to 20 bucks, but it was out of stock. I'm excited now. Is that something, has this happened to you as the world of, of YouTube just uh, opened up your life, even at my age, even at 63? Uh, many of you know, I was not the glamour gal. Never have been the glamour gal, always felt uh, too much was it just that too much I always felt that uh, hints and touches and uh, a little definition did more for me than uh, than anything um, plus uh, I never felt comfortable in public with colorful lipstick or a uh, mascara that was not waterproof. I'll never for the life of me know how. Well, I, I think I understand today because you can literally get a lip color or lip liner, lip gloss that piles onto your lips and it stays there. I don't know how it stays there. But it's not like, you know, decades ago when I was growing up. It seemed like everything smudged and swirled all over. And I've shared this before, but it still bothers me. Um, as a, as a, a young person, all my aunts who wore lipstick, they all or like a bright red. The only one I remember, like maybe not wearing the bright red with maybe a little bit of lip gloss or a light like Estee Lauder pink was my mom. She was the Estee Lauder queen, bless her heart. She really had her own little style that uh, perhaps my aunts had their style as well, but because they weren't my mom, uh, it wasn't as endearing to me, I guess, you know, as I think back upon it, but uh, it was like a lipstick that wasn't in a lipstick tube, it was in a little palette thing, or a little compact, I think she put it on with a brush, now. Now I'm yeah, I'm just now thinking of this. Uh, can you get lipstick like that in a little compact that you put on with a lipstick brush, or did she make that up? She made up the best stuff. Um, I told you about the <laughs> the two recipes she thought up herself that as a when, when I was in grammar school, I thought my mom could have a chance to be famous. But, you know, looking back at it now, it's not that big of a deal. She made her own uh, um, Thousand Island salad dressing and her own uh, tartar sauce. 
my dad got such a kick out of those condiments and he'd always come out come out and say honey what what tartar sauce is this, this or what what salad dressing and she said I made it myself and my dad would just rave I was just thinking like wow if I had a recipe if I was grown up and I had a recipe I would definitely be bottling it I love Lucy and her salad dressing. Anyways, I I share these stories. I don't know how many times you guys heard me go over the same stories, but they're they're just such a nice, uh, I guess, escape. You know, in a world today when there's a lot of uh, or maybe harsh issues to deal with, or you know, unknown issues. And, there's comfort for me to, to go back to the fun sitcoms, I guess. Oh, speaking of sitcoms, George Lopez has a new, I don't know if you call it a sitcom, but it's a new TV show now here in Southern California. It's on Friday night on NBC. I knew I was going to watch it simply because... George Lopez to me is so hysterically funny. So I might I might for once in my life be on top of a TV show right as it's popular. Uh, because all the other shows uh, that I came to enjoy never enjoyed them. Uh, when they were all that even friends I remember friends was all that and I didn't start to somewhat enjoy it till many many years later same with you know Seinfeld King of Queens um, Golden Girls was half and half I did kind of enjoy that when it was really on So that's our homework for Friday night. I'm hoping to post this on Thursday night. And I think tomorrow's a holiday. Friday is a holiday. And, uh, yes, I have my TV timer tuned to, uh, Lopez versus Lopez. And we even recorded the Country Music Awards, which was last night. But you guys, what has happened with commercials? Have the commercials been uh, so bad lately? Or are we just so spoiled with no commercials on our streaming services that any amount of commercials are upsetting, but um, we're having a hard time watching uh, even football. My husband's really enjoying the f football, Sunday, Monday night football, and I just try so hard to start recording it before we watch it because I can't handle the commercials. And then the music awards were three hours long. And um, occasionally I try to time. I try to figure out how many minutes worth of commercials do they throw into a three hour program. I'll see if I can do it tonight. We'll watch probably watch the country music awards from last night. And then as I'm speeding through, I'll try to eyeball the timer and see. Even on uh, uh, Roku, they've got some wonderful uh, old TV programs on the Roku channel, which you don't pay for, but they, they know how to snag you in. The f first few shows you watch, maybe one commercial. The more shows you watch, the more commercials they throw in. 
I am just a party poop. Can't handle it. So, um, Roku, just so you know, Roku, Pluto, and Tubi, I do believe they're all free that you can watch, but it's your, you can't get out of the commercial. Right now, the reason we're addicted to Roku is Columbo. Oh my goodness. That was a show I enjoyed. That was in the 70s, I think. Yeah, that was in the 70s. And I remember being on to Columbo when it was popular. Uh, I lived at home most of the 70s. Didn't leave home till... Uh, 79 but all these years I've loved the reruns and Roku has a Columbo shows on and they have all the seasons my daughter can't get over it because every time a new one comes on I said oh that's a good one oh that's a good one oh remember him Dick Van Dyke they had all the best actors that would um cameo Dick Van Dyke um, not David Cassidy uh, Jack Cassidy um, a lot of familiar faces I, I don't know that their names off the top of my head but um, um, my daughter can't get over it oh they had one with Sal Minio you guys might not know Sal Minio unless you're an avid um um, what's that movie with uh, Natalie Wood so many oh, and James Dean Rebel, Rebel Without a Cause and how all three of them there was a thing I read in the paper years ago how all three of them from that same movie died crazy deaths Natalie Wood they think uh, Robert Wagner killed her on purpose, pushed her over the, their personal yacht when she was drunk. It's still up in the air. And um, we know uh, James Dean and that crazy car, one, one man car crash. Pretty sure it was just his car. I don't think he hit another car. And that Sal Minio when he was on Columbo my daughter said, Mom, how do you know all this stuff? Because I have a bad habit of not only will I say, oh my goodness, there's such and such, but I go into the, the, uh, the, uh, it was it Rona Barrett? Who was the, there was Rona Barrett and there was another movie star, a lady with a big hat, and she knew all the stories and gossips. But so I said, there's so many, oh, and he was in a rebel with a cause, and they all died these freaky deaths, and I go in to tell her all this stuff, she's sticking her in. She said, Mom, you need to, you need to find something better to do with your free time. And the crazy thing is, is a lot of this stuff I knew way before, you know, recently that I've, been researching the internet to death so I don't know how I knew it other than that was all the stuff they talked about when when all the homes only had like you know 10 or 8 or 10 channels and none of us had cable we were all watching you know the same thing and Jack Cassidy he had a spooky death he had all these issues after he separated from Shirley Jones and they found him dead he was also somewhere in Hollywood Sal, oh let me backtrack a little Sal Minio had a freaky death he somewhere in West Hollywood had come home and this was a year this was approximately 1976 a year after he had made this Columbo episode came home West Hollywood in his parking garage and he was murdered with a knife and they think it was the pizza delivery man and the wife kind of even um, 
went to the police with some um, evidence that it, it could have been her husband with blood on his outfit, all these things. And that was freaky. And it was just the worst timing that this pizza guy uh, with a criminal record was on his bike or something. And it wasn't planned. It was just bad timing and uh, so a lot of times you can research uh, trivia about the Rebel Without a Cause movie and they might uh, mentioned, mention the three actors who had uh, untimely deaths <clears throat> and I do love <laughs> there's something cute about Columbus Yes, annoying sometimes as well, but cute, kind of. I still like Columbo.